then uh, the 23rd game I beat was Super Mario Advance when they released this on Nintendo Switch Online. Really enjoyed this game. Um, but i got to say, it's by far the worst Mario game. And I know people might point out that maybe the advanced version isn't the best version to go back to. Probably point out like the original NES version or the Super Nintendo version, a part of Mario All-Stars. But I have a big nostalgia for the Game Boy Advance and especially the Mario Advanced versions. So I was actually waiting for the Mario Advance versions to come to Nintendo Switch Online to play through Mario Bros. 2. And it was interesting because when I was playing it, I was sort of thinking to myself like, did I actually play this when I was a kid? So I played it, but did I beat it? I, c I couldn't remember. So I'm going to go off the fact that I probably didn't. I probably just played it on Virtual Console and emulation and all of those things again and again and again. But I just played like the first couple of worlds and that was it. But I finally beat it <laughs> as, a, as an adult. And uh, yeah, it's definitely the worst Mario game. You, I, you can see that it originally was not a Mario game. You know, the fact that it came out in the US as Mario Brothers 2 instead of the true Super Mario Brothers 2, which is just a harder version. And um, I think that was actually kind of a smart, uh, smart business call to make back in the day. You know, make it look completely different from a marketing point of view, as well as, you know, make it a bit easier to, um, you know, for kids and those silly Western kids like myself who wouldn't have been able to finish it, even though I was not born <laughs> when it came out. What was I? I might have been. I can't remember what time. I can't remember the year Super Mario Brothers 2 came out. Top of my head. But um, I, I can't say I enjoyed it all that much. I didn't enjoy the the main mechanic of picking up enemies and throwing them. Doing the Birdo, you know, mini boss battle again and again. Even like the segments where you've got to pick up a key and you're kind of defenseless and you've got to get down and unlock. I didn't, um, it didn't, uh, you know, scratch the itch of a Mario game for me. It just felt like a, another platformer. Which, you know, like I mentioned, it, it, it kind of is. <laughs> it really is. But um, I think uh, just the whole sort of vibe of the game is really fun. I like how you got all the different playable characters. And even the enemies that originate from this game, you know, being Shy Guys, Birdo. Um, there's, there's many more, but they're, they're the biggest ones, especially Shy Guy. Shy Guy is probably like one of the more noticeable enemies, like right next to Goombas and Bullet Bills and Coopers. So pretty cool that they were introduced in this game and that they were never originally actually <laughs> a Mario um, enemy. But yeah, I didn't enjoy it that much, but I'm glad that I finally played it. And the advanced version was fun. It was fun to play through. I liked the voice acting in these advanced versions and uh, playing them that way. But the main game that I was really excited to get to was Super Mario World Super Mario Advance 2, which was a game I have heaps of of nostalgia for just so much nostalgia for this was my first mario game i ever bought um probably the first platformer mario game i played like i probably i think i got hooked on mario through mario kart 64 playing at friends birthdays and all of that but when i got my game boy advance it was for pokemon got it with pokemon sapphire and i probably i think i went on to get like a heart not heart gold um fire red leaf green and uh, played pokemon pinball but I just, I thought to myself, like, I probably actually need to get a Mario game. I've got a Mario, oh, a Nintendo console. I should really actually pick up a Mario title. So I went, as a kid, I would have been probably 10 years old. And I went to the local mum and pop shop, went in there. And I was just looking at the Game Boy Advance games. I had I had money to spend. I was all cashed up. I had my Milo tin full of cash. And I was looking around, like, you know, what game should I put, pick up? And I remember, you know, seeing the Mario World box, having Mario with the cape, the feather riding Yoshi and looking back at at the camera, I guess, at you. And I remember that really catching me because Yoshi is my favorite character um, in the Mario universe. And it just caught my eye straight away. And obviously this was the game where Yoshi originated. Um, so it caught my eye straight away. I wasn't going to get Mario Brothers 3 or any other of the advanced versions or any other Mario game on the Game Boy Advance. I picked World and honestly... This was probably the last game where I actually picked it purely on box art and the back of the box. Because, uh, you know, uh, it was sort of Mario that sort of kicked me into not just playing Pokemon, but also playing um, other games. <laughs> I didn't play too many other games on Game Boy Advance at the time. I, I had a Digimon game and I got like some Simpson games. Um, but yeah, but largely it was still a lot of Pokemon. But um, that was sort of the kick off into like trying other things within Nintendo and sort of left me on the on the course to trying other other video games just in general and ultimately getting an Xbox and PlayStation and 
everything else across Nintendo. So that was sort of my sort of leap out of just being a Pokemon kid as such. And that's when I sort of got into gaming magazines and reading up on games coming out. And I was a lot more informed after that when it came to my purchases. Um, even if I knew the game wasn't that good. I remember, I think I was reading a review for Pokemon Pinball, Ruby and Sapphire. And as I had the reviews, I don't know if they were that good, but I remember still getting it because I wanted it. But I knew. <laughs> that's a great game though, so I don't know if that's the example I'm thinking of. Maybe it's Mystery Dungeon. Talk about Mystery Dungeon. I remember they're getting like sixes. And when I actually got it and played it, I'm like, this is, this is like a 10 out of 10 for little 11-year-old Drew. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I bought it just purely off of the box art. And I remember it being so expensive. It was like $80 at the time. So just, you know, with inflation <laughs> at the moment. So we're playing $80 now for Switch games. So $80 for a port of a Super Nintendo game on Game Boy Advance back in 2004 or 2005. Yeah, that was a very expensive game, especially for a kid who's, you know, just on pocket money or whatever. I'm not, um, I'm not working in the mines just yet at that age. Uh, so I've just got such fond memories. Obviously, it was a massive purchase, put a lot of stake into it. I made that decision. I took it home, my very first Mario game, and it just, it paid off in dividends. I, I could not be happier with the purchase. It's um, my favorite 2D Mario game. And I had, a, I remember it taking me ages to get through it and... Even like the final boss, you're versing Bowser in the in the clown car. I remember like struggling with it so much, not understanding what you do. And uh, my, uh, Bryce, he actually, <laughs> he, he must have played it on a Super Nintendo. So he, he basically beat it for me, showed me how to do it. And then um, I remember going back to it and just beating it just whenever I wanted, actually like learning how to do it, becoming pretty good at it. But it took me forever to do it. And it was funny going back to the version on Nintendo Switch Online. I can't remember the last time I played Mario World. It would have been... It could have even been playing as a kid on Game Boy Advance or you know, even DS with backwards compatibility back when uh, that was a thing. So it was a long time and I, I was like, how long is it going to take me to beat it? Because I remember it being a pretty long game, but I ended up beating the game as an adult in about two hours. And I wasn't... I didn't do like a shortcut through Star Road or anything. I was just going through levels and beating them and got to Bowser and it was a little bit of a maze in the last level to get to Bowser and I I'm like oh god I can't remember and I just like sort of fluked it and I got them oh cool <laughs> and uh, that was um, that was it and I beat Bowser and that was that was my game that was like a two hour sit down that was nice that was just a really nice nostalgic hit and uh, yeah and this is a wonderful game and there's a debate between Mario World and Super Mario Brothers 3 look there's no definitive answer like I mentioned with games that hit us at certain times in our lives it just depends on probably your age and maybe your first Nintendo console etc etc and for me it's Mario World it just you know it hit the right time with the advanced version on Game Boy Advance um, but I can see just all the, the pros to um, Mario Brothers 3 I love the vibe of Mario Brothers 3 and just the short levels and the power ups are super unique even to this day it's an it's a awesome game and with the box art with like Tanuki Mario on the front, that's very iconic. And that wasn't brought back into 3D, uh, 3D Land on 3DS, which is so cool to play that in 3D. So, yeah, no, there's just a um, massive amount of nostalgia for Super Mario Advance 2. And uh, I love the Mario, I love the advanced versions. Don't at me, don't care. I Look, technically, whatever, I'm sure that Super Mario World is better on Super Nintendo, but... Do I care? Do I want the Mario voice? You know, yeah, I do. I do. Do I like the, the Mario Bros. arcade game that's included on every advanced version? Yeah, I do. I do like that. I like that very much, actually. And having that on the TV now is awesome because I got the arca arcade archives version of the Mario Brothers series. Not the, not the series. I'm thinking of the cartoon now. Of the arcade game. And it's, it feels different. It's, it's not the same to what I played on the advanced version. So it feels way more slippery and stuff on the actual arcade version. But um, the version on the advanced uh, advanced copies is really cool. I remember playing that um, on a bus when uh, I was over in a uh, holiday in New Zealand and we were on a, well, actually on a, on a bus trip with, like, with a bunch of farmers going around different farms looking around. And a lot of my time just in between stops was playing the, the arcade version and seeing how far I can get. And it's funny playing it now with the rewind you make like a little mistake, like, no, oh, just oh, look, look, no one's looking, I'm just gonna go back. Hey, just rewind it, man. 
And uh, you can just go on forever. I was sitting, I was playing for like an hour, just like, I don't really, <laughs> you know, you don't die that much, but you know, you die a couple of times. Look, look yeah, no, re, re, bloody, rewind the tape there, Jim. So, yeah, no, I, I love these copies. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely worth a look. If you have um, the sta- same love in your heart for Game Boy Advance as I do, go check out the Advance copies. Go check it out. But um, if you're a Super Nintendo stan, um, what am I going to do? Can't change your mind. I don't want to change your mind. Enjoy your life. Live it to your fullest potential, please. <laughs>